a woven basket. It's a 320-ton Komatsu Hallpack 930E, currently the largest truck in the mining industry, though probably not for long. There's already some manufacturers talking about 360 tons, and there's probably going to be 400-plus tons uh, trucks in the future. It wouldn't surprise me. Clearly, this is not your typical pickup. A man can walk underneath this vehicle without even bending over. The six tires have a radius of over 12 and a half feet and cost over $30,000 each. The fuel tank carries 1,200 gallons of diesel. Most uh, highways wouldn't last very long with the uh, types of weights that we're talking about in these trucks. Neither would overpasses. This truck is 23 feet tall. It's basically just like driving a big old, big old house with a car kit with a cab sitting on top. Komatsu Mining Systems is one of about six manufacturers of these large off-road trucks. Their plant in Peoria, Illinois began as the dream of a man named R.G. Letourneau. He manufactured scrapers, made his own welders, made wire rope, and basically founded this. So from that, we grew into off-highway trucks. Letourneau kept his engineers on their toes. He would go around the shop and uh, some piece wouldn't work or wouldn't fit or whatever. He uh, would either uh, redesign it on the shop floor with chalk or he'd have an envelope in his pocket and he'd draw it on the back of the envelope and it'd drive the engineers and that's just trying to keep up with him because those were the changes for uh, the next machine. Letourneau's first haul pack truck was a 32-ton vehicle designed for use at mine sites. Hauling giant boulders, tons of earth, or mounds of coal. He'd make the truck short so it would have a short turning circle, make it maneuverable. But the, the major thing he did was that the truck weighed less than it carried. And all the trucks prior to the off-highway trucks prior to that weighed a lot more than, than uh, the payload that they carried. There's a lot of efficiencies gained with that. Trucks evolved from old dump wagons of the 19th century, designed to be able to lift and dump their haul of earth. With the advent of the internal combustion engine, companies like Mack improved on the horse-drawn wagons. Standard trucks that worked standard jobs, even giant projects like the Hoover Dam were small enough that they could weigh more than their payload. But when the truly gigantic off-road trucks began in the late 1940s, their much larger payload capacity made Letourneau's lighter design much more practical. After Letourneau retired, the company passed through many hands, including ultimately Komatsu, which now builds a vehicle with 10 times the hauling capacity of Letourneau's first haul pack. Things have changed since the days of blueprints on the back of envelopes. I supervise six other engineers, and we're responsible for the design of the hydraulic systems on the trucks, as well as the brake systems, brake application systems, and final drive design for the large electric trucks. The largest trucks are powered partly by diesel engines and partly by electricity generated by the vehicle itself. The diesel engine is connected to electrical generators. Energy created when the trucks descend a hill is stored in batteries on the vehicle. That stored energy is then used to power the trucks when they ascend hills, sending power to the large wheel motors. The trucks have no transmission. Yes, it is, it is more elaborate than uh, your, your typical Ford or Chevy pickup. The Komatsu plant looks like a boneyard for dinosaurs. The assembly process for a 930 takes approximately 10 days from the time the frame is set in this building and the assembly process starts. Steel that makes up the body can be one and a half inches thick. The engine is 2,700 horsepower. The truck reaches a top speed of about 45 miles an hour. The volume of the bed is roughly 200 cubic yards. The vehicle is 27 feet wide and 50 feet long. Once the assembled truck is tested, it has to be disassembled and transported to the job site. Typically ships by rail requiring three rail cars to ship the wheels, the truck itself, and its components, but that does not include the bed of the truck. Once on site, the trucks are in continuous use. Three shifts a day, 365 days a year for the life of the vehicle, which is estimated at 15 years or more. That's around 100,000 hours of driving. Mines must really work the trucks to show a profit. A truck the size of the 930 costs over $2 million. The name of the game in producing efficiently is asset utilization. When a customer, such as a large mine, buys a fleet of equipment, they're making a substantial capital investment 
and they have to get every ounce of production out of that investment that they can get. These trucks are used in all kinds of mines, from coal to gold, but they are most commonly used in open pit copper mines. Having eight or ten giant haul packs is cheaper and more efficient than having 40 or 50 smaller vehicles. In other words, it's, it's more economically efficient to move ore with larger and larger machines. And in an industry with a poor environmental reputation, these trucks produce less emissions per ton than smaller trucks and take fewer trips. The trucks are sized to match the shovels that do the actual digging on site, with optimum truck size being four passes or swings of the shovel per load. That's as much as 80 tons per shovelful. Big trucks like these have to be accommodated with special wide roads. It costs a lot of money in the mine to build a road for the trucks. They're changing all the time because they're making the mine wider all the time. So they have to keep, you know, keep the roads up, and, and uh, it's a big cost for them to do that. And if you're driving a regular size vehicle, you have to watch out. Because up in the driver's seat of a 930, the blind spot is enormous. There are numerous incidents of pickup trucks being run over in mines by these trucks. And I will tell you, in a 320-ton truck, you can run over a pickup truck and not know it. For now, the 930 is at the top of the heap for big trucks, literally towering over every other truck in the industry.